Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Joan again, and here is another session of our uh, painting and uh, painting lesson. And uh, I am hoping that everyone is doing well, and we hope to reach a lot of people through this medium. And um, for those that does not know me, my name is Joan, and I belong to the Lakeside Church in Toronto. And we have Sunday services at 10, 10, no, 10.30 in the morning. Online services only, unfortunately, because of all these lockdowns in Ontario. And um, Sunday gathering is, again once again, uh, prohibited. Uh, but we still have all sorts of uh, ways to go around that. We can go online and still uh, praise and worship the Lord. Um, speaking of the Lakeside Church Toronto, we have um, several ministries going on there. So if you want to see uh, we are uh, where we are um, there, we are the Arts and Skills Ministry. So check out the, the link, um, the lakesidechurch.ca ministries, slash ministries, and you'll see all sorts of ministries listed there. Um, and, and you will be able to find all the things that we uh, do. And while you're at it, you could also check out all the other ministries that perhaps could contribute to your lives that ben benefit you, or maybe you could be a benefit to others. Okay, so um, without further ado, we have John uh, to give us our devotional for today. So by the way, today we're gonna be painting roses. So we've never done this before. And it's a little bit different from the way I normally paint. And hopefully I'll be able to um, transfer that uh, skill to you all. John, yes. come on up. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all well. Bless you today. Um, God richly bless you and keep you today. I need a tiny bit of room, my love. So um, I saw the uh, painting that Joan was going to do. And uh, the first thing I said was, oh, my mom would love that one. Because my mother absolutely loves roses. And uh, around her house, I don't know how many pictures there were, that, but they would always have roses in them. And, and uh, a lot of them would have roses, and uh, it reminded me of my dear mother who passed away into the Lord's care. But uh, anyway, so basically, it's it's a picture of a garden, and uh, I hope you're going to do that same one, Joe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. <laughs> anyway, sorry for snorting. Anyway, uh, it's beautiful, and I started to think, well, what is a garden? Well, it's a place where pruning happens. And, uh, you know, there is some pruning that occurs in our own lives at times, and it can be painful. Um, I've been working a little bit in the backyard already this year, and uh, see, there's a, a, a large shrub that we over pruned, and uh, it, it's got no life on it whatsoever here. It looks like we over pruned it, and it, it looks like it's. Oops, sorry about that. But uh, anyway, so we're not really that knowledgeable of gardeners ourselves around here, but we try. Um, another thing that goes on in a garden is sowing. And of course, uh, when it comes to sowing, Jesus had a lot of things to say about sowing. Um, but one of my favorite scriptures when it comes to sowing is Psalm 26, uh, 126, sorry, you guys. 126. Five and six. So I'm going to go there really quick and I'm going to read that to you. This is a very short psalm. I could read the whole thing, but uh, maybe I should. Starting in verse one When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who were in a dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Just imagine the joy of these people when they 
return from their captive. Um, it reminds me of how I feel when I realize that I've been born again. Um, then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Nothing wrong with being glad in Christian life, and being happy. And, uh, you don't have to hide your gladness. They were glad. Uh, it says that their, their mouth was filled with laughter. And that's one thing I love about my household. Uh, no matter where I am, I can usually hear somebody laughing somewhere. Uh, Bring back our captivity, O Lord, in verse 4, as the streams of the south. Then the one I wanted to make, uh, uh, bring your attention to, verse 5. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. So we have many things going on in our life, and we have a sadness sometimes, or we might... Uh, find that when we pray for our relatives or our, a loved one who is enslaved, we might find tears in our eyes. And myself, I believe that we should not despise those. I'm not positive where it is, but I think it's an imitation. You know, Jeremiah says, oh, that my eyes were fountains. Something like that. I, I may be quoting a little bit wrong. I apologize. Anyway, verse 6. This is the person who goes in tears. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And of course, we know that when our uh, Savior prayed, he wept. And um, there's a scripture that describes how with loud groanings he, he cried. Uh, we know that also from um, when he was at the tomb of Lazarus. Um, and gardens are a place where Jesus himself uh, would prefer to go. Well, initially he set Adam and Eve in a garden. A garden is a place that's cared for, tended. Um, many of us love the beauty of the outdoors, and even in the wilds. Um, but to go to a place where someone with some intelligence and love has taken care of this, um, the natural beauty of plants and flowering plants and things like that, it can be a special treat. And the Lord actually preferred to go there when he was going to face the cross. And so I just wanted to look at, I, I wanted to look at that and um, I'll try to be quick. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it says that uh, in in Matthew, he, he took them to the garden, garden of Gethsemane, and he told his disciples, "Sit over here." Well, I uh, he took Peter and James and John, and began uh, to with him, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Now imagine this is our Lord. Then he said to them, "My soul is exceeding sorrowful." even to death. Stay here and watch for me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And again in uh, Mark, 1435. I particularly like that part where it said, and he fell on his face. I mean, he was uh, really, really feeling. And then the, I guess the point I want to make here, in the Christian life, there's room to be genuine. We don't need to pretend that we're not sorrowful. Because the Lord dealt with sorrow and uh, demonstrated how he dealt with sorrow. 
So we don't need to pretend to be happy all the time. We can be genuine instead. And I encourage you to be very genuine with yourself, with God, so that when you come before God, and when you live your life yourself, you come before God with an honest prayer and you, and you endeavor to live your life honestly. Okay, now I've gotten sidetracked. Mark 14, 35. Then they came to the place which is named Semini. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. So to his disciples, he didn't bother telling them to pray. Then he took Peter, James, and John with him and began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Stay here and watch. I want to make this comment very clear. Jesus was not a person given to exaggeration. He was not exaggerating at all when he says this. And uh, God does not exaggerate. If anything, God is the God of the understatement. He says he's going to do something. And believe me, he does it uh, to the nth degree. Then, um, then a little, he went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed. Um, and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, now this is why I, I came to Mark. This In this one, it says, Abba Father. This is a word that actually means daddy in the English language. Very, very emotional. Abba Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I want, but what you want. That's our Savior right there. That's his heart. But he wasn't, uh, he wasn't some sort of a computer. He didn't feel things. He wasn't a cold person. He wasn't touched. He was very touched by our troubles and by the fact that he was going to face not just the cross, but separation from his father, separation from the Holy Spirit. And the entire weight of all our sins was going to press down upon him and try to hold him in hell. Which it could not do. Because of his beauty, because of his holiness and his perfect life. Forgive me for weeping. This is a little too precious for me to read without tears. Anyway, sorry to apologize. Why don't you stop there? But no, I'm done. <laughs> that was where I'm finished. Um, but um, God richly bless you all. And uh, enjoy this uh, painting that you're doing with John. I just bow my head, oh Lord, before you now. And I ask that you would touch your students. deeply. I pray that you would move them to the core of their being as they make an attempt at creating something that you actually created in the real, Lord, in the real world. You created gardens. And um, they're going to do a painting in order to a garden. And they want to, I'm sure all of them want to be enthused. They want to feel the breath of the Holy Spirit stir within them and help them to paint and to enjoy creating, oh Lord. Because you are the great creator. Your great wisdom and, and, and wonderfulness made us in your image, you set up us apart from all the other creatures on the earth that were little creators. 
And thank you for that. Like I said, In your name, thank you, and forgive my tears. But I hate this. I hate to see old men cry. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you, John. Uh, that's really, really beautiful, and. Yes, so we, we're going to be uh, painting some roses today. But before we come to our rose, normally they come from seeds, seed seedlings. And the gardener needs to be there and tend to them and so that they would bloom uh, nicely and, and for us to enjoy. Um, but a lot, just like what John said, a gardener needs to weed the garden, take out what's not, what what does not belong there. And, and um, that's the same for our lives. We've got to learn how to weed out things that are not good for us and uh, tend to the things that are good to us. We fertilize our plants, our garden, and, and keep them home. So I'm going to go ahead with our painting. So for today... Um, we can use other uh, colors for our flowers that we like to paint, okay? But for this particular one, I'm going to go with red and white. And then from that, I created pink. And then I have green for the leaves, green and yellow, and a little bit of white there. And I have blue and white for the sky and, I guess, brown dark area for, for the back of the garden, okay? So now you see here I have two canvas. One is my practice canvas. It's probably good for, for everyone to have one of these things. So sometimes you have um, paintings that you don't like, turned out not so nice or whatever, or you're tired of it. You can just go ahead and paint over it. And then do something or do use it as a practice. So in this case, I use this as a practice. All right? There you go. Practice all this little flowers. I'm going to teach you how to do this. So I would prefer that you use a flat brush like this. Can you see that? With a little bit of an angle. But it's not necessary, okay? So the angle just kind of keeps me in track as to where my colors are going to be. Normally, we would just mix our paint, right? This time, we are not. We are going to load our brush. If you don't have this kind of uh, uh, brush, just use um, pardon me, a flat brush. Any flat brush will do. So what we will be doing is loading our brush on one side, one color. I don't know if Facebook can see me at the top there. So I have YouTube on this side and Facebook at the top. Okay. So, and if you have any question, by the way, uh, on YouTube, you just type in your question. I'll be able to answer that and on Facebook as well. And if you have any question, um, uh, the TLC uh, students, uh, you can post it on WhatsApp and Nicole is there watching and she'll be able to answer you as well. Okay, so going back to the brush. So if you have a flat brush, um, be like this. Yeah, this is flat. That. Hi, Christine. And thanks for joining. So if you wet your flat brush it becomes very chiseled at the, at the end the same as this other one okay but uh, in this case i'll use the one that has the uh angle it's just it's easier okay, but not necessary all right so we're gonna wet our brush so two ways we view our flowers like directly in front looking at it I just have to have some tulips here. 
Um, shout out to my daughter who had a wonderful birthday yesterday. So these are her flowers. <laughs> so you look at your flower directly. This is what it's going to be. And you can also look at your flower on its side, right? So this is how we're going to paint that. Okay, here we go. So we read our brush. So we have, I have my water, I have paper towel, I have uh, my big brush for the sky later on. Um, there's the flat brush. And I have my um, round, tiny brush for making my petals. Or you can use any brush, really. All right, so what I have done is mix the white and the red. Want yellow? I believe um, Auntie Shirley Ann wants a yellow rose. We can do that too. Okay, so you just do like a shaky oval. That and fill that in. So that's that's your background, okay? So that it fills um, the canvas. With acrylic, the canvas kind of sucks paint in. Okay, so now you've done that. You rinse your brush. Now this is the time where I would stress that you have a, a wet paper towel, damp paper towel. You're gonna be wiping your brush quite a bit this time, okay? Um, when you start seeing there's too much brush, too much paint on your brush, you just wipe it off, all right? So remember one side of the brush will have one color and the other side will have a different color, okay? So for me, the pointy whole side of my brush will have the white. Okay, I just dip that, I'm just dipping it. I'm not uh, mixing it, okay? So dip both sides. And then on the other side, I'll have the red, okay? All right, so ready? I'm just gonna make a curl. Oh, saw that. I'm gonna bring my practice board closer. I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna make a curl. So the light, the what the side that has the white is the one that goes on the top. Okay. So touch my painting, my paint. I'm gonna do it again. You can shake it. The brush is Okay, but again, we're just gonna make sort of C's. Better see your arches all around the edge of our flower. And once you're running out of paint, just dip, don't forget. I'll mix up your paint, okay? Do you see that? The white and the pink are, or red, are not mixed. They're just kind of side by side. The white is outside, okay? Go. There's our first layer of petal. So we do the outside first. Now we go inside. Another layer. Okay, give it a little shake. Petals are never completely straight anyway. There you go. There's the second layer. And then the third layer. I have to bring the canvas uh, closer because it's the easel is too far. <laughs> okay, so again, the white tip of my brush. Uh, yeah. Brush is at the top. 
and just go curl. This is the time where we're gonna be dipping a lot on our paint. Just curl them. Curl, semi-circle. There you go. There's one. Okay. So that's looking at the rose uh, directly on it, okay? I'm gonna rinse my brush. We're gonna, uh, I'm going to teach you how to do the rose while looking at, at it sideways. So, I mean this kind. Okay. So the same thing. I rinse my brush. I'm going to tap white, put white on one side, then the red or the pink on the other side. And there's a little bit of trick to this, okay? You start by making sort of a curl. But you see the the bottom it didn't make didn't make a big uh, curl. I just kind of did the white at the top. One. And then I'm gonna get some more paint. Now I'm gonna make a U at the bottom, okay? If you have any questions, don't hesitate, hesitate to ask. So we're gonna U, make a U at the bottom. Again, the white is at top. And I'm gonna start at this end, and I'm gonna make a U and end on the other side. Okay, ready? <laughs> And, and on the other side. You see that? Okay. Now we're going the other way, but we're just gonna go slightly right next to that petal and make another U going on to the other side. Do that again. So just push it down and across the other side. And we'll do it about, I don't know, more times. And if you make a mistake, it's okay. You can just paint over it. All right, and one more time. There, so we're just going back and forth. Need a little bit more white to highlight it. Just go ahead and apply that. There we go. There's your little, you call it a bud, I guess. So that was just one to the, on the top. And then one, two, three, four, four back and forth. Okay. And I'm gonna put a little bit of touch of highlights. There we go. Then at the bottom, we have our green. Okay. And this will have a stop. Okay. 
point. So that's two ways that we are painting our flowers. Any question? Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> okay, so that's practice. Okay, now we go into our garden. Ready, folks? <laughs> Nicole, I almost dropped my brush again. <laughs> okay, so that's how you practice. They just keep on going back and forth into sideways. All right. Let's start on the side. Now oh, here is our painting. I'm gonna grab my big brush. We'll put in a little bit of sky. Just blue and white, really. So what I would suggest is when you come to your uh, big canvas, um, Make let's make it so that we're going to create not just roses but other kinds of flowers. So, I believe if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Nicole, that she is also going to be paint teaching you how to paint some flowers next time. So, um, let's put that in the same canvas if you want, or you can use a different canvas, doesn't matter. <laughs> But uh, that way we could create a garden with several different flowers. That's just a suggestion. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna create a little sky. No clouds really. Be lighter on the horizon. All right, sort of just before the midpoint. Okay. There's our sky and now we're gonna do uh, sort of the green background. But I'm going to mix dark green shade. The rougher, the better. All 
Remember, you're the gardener. You decide what flowers, plants goes into your garden. And it's your responsibility to take care of the garden. I ran out of paint. <laughs> <laughs> Just blocking our canvas with paint. Almost done. But with the roses, um, I would suggest that you keep on practicing it um, on a piece of paper or uh, another canvas. Because um, you could do so many things with roses. Just like mom, John's mom. Uh, they're my favorite, one of my favorite flowers. And I'm just so glad that I'm able to um, share this uh, with you and be able to teach it. And hopefully you'll be able to create your own painting and share it with others. All right, here we go. Well, what we're going to do here, we're going to do a little fence, okay? We will even do some, some bush. So we'll have our flower here and a little fence right about here. Okay, so I'm rinsing my brush. Maybe two or three uh, fence to give our painting a little bit of character. I'm going to use the other flat brush. And what I'm going to mix is just brown and white. Okay. That one has blue. That's fine. Too. So this is like just the end of a fence, right? Uh, on Shout out to our friends from many different parts of the world. We have friends that are watching us in the Philippines, the United States, Dominican Republic, Dominica, and um, and I don't know if you have heard, uh, Saint Vincent had um, a volcano erupt, and uh, many people are affected by it. So we pray for them. That they would be able to recover really soon. They don't need this anymore on top of the pandemic that's happening. Ooh. 
me and straight lines, we don't go together. I need something to guide me. I need a ruler. Ta-da! I'm not putting the ruler against my painting because it's wet. So what I do, I put my brush against the ruler and I come down, okay? Much green. Oh, this might be a trick that you guys could use yourself. There you go. Okay, we'll just do three posts or fence. Okay. Wait for now. We'll just come back and touch that a little bit later on when it's a little bit drier. Oh, let's just create some bushes. Use our um, brush that's stiff. They are perfect for creating bushes. Now, this would be also a good time to use those sponge. If you have any of those, this would be a good time to do a, 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 and fast this way. Actually, how about that? Or not. <laughs> I thought I had one, but um, it's somewhere, I guess. But that would be a, a, the best uh, thing to use uh, right now for a bush. Okay? So we're going to mix a little bit of the black. Oh, to get the black. And green. We want to create a dark green, okay? Um, black and green. That's we're using a lot of green. And I understand that there's quite a bit of difficulty acquiring supplies right now. So, um, but you can still order online and uh, have it delivered to your place. Well, that, at least in, in Ontario. Right. So we're going to do our I'm mixing it with a little bit of um, yellow. John is creating noise in the kitchen. I think he's hungry. We're going to uh, bring our bush right over our fence here. But right now, if I do that, it will make a mess because it's... um. Uh, still wet, okay? I see Nicole. They're asking for a rose bud. Okay, we're going to do that rose bud. I'm going to do it in this other one, the practice one, because 
at least the canvas is dry. This is so wet and mixing. <laughs> so we'll just create some background bush here. So it's black, green, dark green. And I think here, I'm going to save this section of my garden for Nicole's dandelion. I think yes, she said she said dandelion, and maybe even uh, some tulip. So be creative. Um, we have mentioned that we're gonna be having, well, God willing, we're gonna be having a gallery, another gallery, in the fall. In the pantry there. Anybody found there? Looking for our coconut. Well, is there? Did you find it? Good. Okay, so this will be my bush, and it's gonna go all the way even higher. It's gonna go against the fence later. All right, we'll let that dry for now. And rinse my brush. Okay. So, let's go back here. Let's not get All right. So, teeny tiny rows. I think it's also the same as this, except that it's tighter. Okay. The rosebud. So, I'm going to pick up my white again and my red. White on one end, one side, and red on the other side. Okay. But the same thing actually. We'll just make a little curl. Shape like a corn. And we'll just do a little use. But tighter. Now if you think it's too difficult to handle two colors, practice. It's a great way to um, explore using two colors on your brush at the same time. Just make sure you remember what side, I mean, what color goes on what side. I just did that. <laughs> okay. So we'll just pull it down, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Just a smaller, a tighter bud okay, than this. This one we pulled further out, right? This is starting to open further. Hey, your bud will just be tighter. 
curl up, small curl. There. There's a small curl at the top. And then another curl, sort of a U. At the bottom. That's it. Sort of like this. Just tighter. It's narrower. Same thing. And then the green part does not just go at the bottom, it kind of goes all the way to the side of your butt. My background is green. Maybe I should make, put some yellow. You can see. Just make a V there. It goes all the way to the side. Kind of hugs your flower. Hugs your bud a little bit. Nah, I don't think you can see it. Maybe I'll make it white. So, same idea. Just make the green part hug your flower. Unfortunately, my background is also green, so the green is not showing. Green paint. Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't think. <laughs> Okay, let's do it again, but I'm going to make it big. If you're making a bud, you just make it smaller, okay? I'm going to make it bigger so you can see better. You hardly see when it's small. So, so you, I have two colors on my brush, white on one side and red on the other side. Make a curl, just one. Okay, and then dip your brush again. The way I'm dipping it, I'm just dipping, touching my my color white, my red on the other side. So color white, then flip your brush, touch the red. So bring it closer so you can see. My white is on the top, the red is at the bottom. So we're going to the side of this petal. Not on it, okay, but beside it. And we push it, pull it down and curl up. Okay, so like a U. I'm gonna do it again. But this time going the other way. When you're making a bud, just make it tight. Not too much water. See how I mentioned earlier that it's important for you to have a paper towel because you're gonna be used damp, uh, patching your brush quite a bit for this painting. There's your teeny tiny bud. Okay. All right. And I want to show you more of this big flower. Remember, we just grab our pink color. And 
and we'll put it over here. Just make a nice oval, shaky flower. I mean, background. Okay. That's just so uh, the background color does not bleed through. Now wash my brush again, dry it, then the same thing. Take some white and some red. Flip your brush and pick up some red. Okay, we're doing this. The white side at the top, curl, pull up. And then down, curl, shake it a little bit, and then down. Get some more paint. Curl, curl. You have to turn your canvas, you can always do that. <laughs> That's also fine. White, red. I'm going to look for another layer. White and red. Okay. There you go. White and red. Pearl. Pearl. Then flip your brush. And do the center. There you go. Okay. That's for Facebook. So it will be a great advantage if you have a flat brush. I suggest when you do um, practice, um, use the one with the, the flattest brush you have. With an angle is better. Um, but not necessary, like I said, uh, and just keep on practicing. And then, um, uh, my, my garden is, is quite, quite a bit wet. We'll transfer those flowers into our garden. So that's my idea. <laughs> and then we'll tra transfer the, the roses here and other flowers on the other side so you'll see the result next time all right i hope you enjoyed painting roses with me today keep on practicing that's a trick and twisting and turning is uh i guess you need to uh, do some wrist exercise i don't know and enjoy painting i love doing this i love doing it. show me your work take a picture and uh we'll make it part of our show again next uh, fall, uh, hopefully, God willing. Enjoy your day and uh, thank you for watching. Bye for now.